What's up? It's been a while. <laughs> Welcome to Motivational Monday Movement. I am back. It has been a very interesting few weeks and months. And I have talked to a few people that have kind of asked me like what happened to Motivational Monday Movement? We were looking forward to seeing that. We were motivated. And I said, you know what, I got to do better. And so I'm going to be as transparent as possible. And then we'll talk about what I challenge you guys to do on this Motivational Monday Movement. Um, one of the... One of the reasons why I had to kind of back off from Motivational Monday Movement is because I was dealing with some things on my own. And I was like, you know, I'm struggling with some internal things and how can I go out here and motivate other people? But that's really the reason why you can motivate other people. Um, I am in a new, new city, new state, and over half of the time I've been here, we've been on lockdown because of this COVID mess. I'm deathly afraid of getting COVID because of some of the autoimmune diseases that I have. So it's just been very rough. Um, last week, actually, yeah, last week I turned 40. And of course, the life that I had imagined for myself at 40 and the life that I'm actually living two completely different things. But then I had some things that occurred and let me know that I'm right where I'm supposed to be. So with this Motivational Monday movement, I challenge you to be grateful for the things that you have find joy in the things that you have and work towards growth to get to where you want to be. So I'm going to share a little situation that occurred to me. Well, it, it was a thought that occurred to me after a situation occurred. Um, Friday, a few days ago. I got up and I was like, I think I want a smoothie. You know, it's $5 smoothie. I want to go get a smoothie. And I don't know. I just was feeling like, ugh, ugh. You know, I lost my job in March. And I was supposed to start back in August. Roman is down. So it's just a waiting game. I'm waiting on the government to see about what are we doing about unemployment. You know, it's just a waiting game. I've never had to depend on the government or people for my livelihood. So this has been, you know, a little different. So things have started picking up um, for me. I actually got an email from my job about a position that hopefully will be opening up at the end of October, beginning or end. And so I woke up and I just was, I was in my feelings, man. I was like, dude, like, I walked away from a job making a whole lot of money, a whole lot of money, um, because the district had to take pay cuts. And they told me that I would have to take a $45,000 pay cut. And I felt like I know my worth, and I felt like I'm not doing that. And so I made a decision to make a move, and who knew that the pandemic would be here? So I'm, I got all of this stuff going on in my mind Friday. And I'm like, Lord, like, what is going on? Well, something I don't know is earlier this year, it's another reason why I haven't done a lot of these videos. Um, earlier this year, I was extremely sick. Like, extremely sick. Like, actually, end of last year, too. I started getting sick around October, November. And so I went to the hospital the end of January, I think it was the end of January, beginning of February, and found out that I have Graves' disease. My levels were over six times what they should be. So I have hyperthyroidism. And so I was sick. Like my hair had fallen out. One day I remember I was so sick. I was just throwing up everything I ate, water, everything. I lost three pounds in one day. 
um, rapid, still rapid weight loss, um, trimble, trimbles, uh, trimmers, whatever you call them, um, out of breath, lightheadedness, it was just a lot of stuff going on. And so, I just was upset with God, like, dude, why are you continually putting this on me? Like, I already I have celiac disease, I cannot have kids, which is something I've always wanted to do, and now... You telling me I got Graves' disease, I got to get my thyroid removed, I just had a surgery in 2007. Like, Lord, for real, like, why are you doing this? So I'm driving home from getting my smoothie. And I'm on the phone with my Auntie Jackie, and I just start screaming, oh, shit, oh, shit. And then, oh, shit, turn up, oh, my God, oh, my God. It was a wake-up call for me. I was driving on the highway on 285 North in Atlanta, Georgia, leaving the Smoothie King on Cascade Road. And I kind of jumped like that because there was a truck that was either a lane or two lanes, I'm not for sure, to the left of me. And when I said, oh shit, I saw him hit the concrete wall or whatever that was on that side separating the two sides of the highway when he hit that wall he kept driving and the bed of his truck everything just opened up and spilled out onto the highway and I remember I just kept saying oh my god oh my god oh my god and I remember looking in my rear view mirror and I saw a semi truck coming towards me and all I could say was, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. When I tell y'all that it was a car to the side of me, to the left of me, a car to the right of me, and a car in front of me. All three of those cars hit either the concrete, another car, or the stuff that was in the street, in the highway. I was not injured. I was able to stop inches away from where the cars were. And I had no damage to my car. I was nervous. I had a whole like me mental breakdown. And then the craziest part is my auntie Jake's like, you gotta, you gotta pull over because I was panicking. Like I just was crying on the phone because I had never seen anything like that. The truck had gone up the highway, so I had pulled up close to him and I stopped the car I'm like okay Jake I'm gonna have to call you back I'm like I need to make sure the truck driver is okay so I'm like are you okay and he starts walking across the highway y'all and I'm like no you're in shock it's not a lot of cars coming because of that you know the turmoil that was behind but it was still some cars coming so he comes to me and I said I, I need you to sit down I said cuz you're in shock you just walked across the highway he was like, huh? I said, just sit down. So I look and I, well, I asked him, I said, did you call 911? He said, yes, I called 911. I said, okay. So I see the ambulance and the fire trucks and the police down where the area where I just came through. I don't know how I came through it. And so I had my two masks on because, again, I still got to be responsible because I, I know I can get sick easier than some people. Y'all. I was running towards the ambulance in the fire truck and one of the cars caught on fire it just exploded it just exploded and so I started questioning and I said Lord why me why me why did I make it through this there's no way I even told my mom I said I shouldn't have made it through that and she said if you shouldn't have you wouldn't have Ooh, sorry, this is it's just it's emotional because sometimes we can beat ourselves up so much because we're not where we want to be or we haven't done what we thought we should have did, but we're right where we need to be. And the reason why God spared me is because I still have things left to do on this earth. I still have things left to do. Sometimes we get so wrapped up in what we think should happen that we forget to be appreciative of the things that we have. 
I have had three incidents like that. I've had three incidents like that in the matter of a month. It's a wake-up call. Yes, I can't have kids. I'm not married. I'm not, you know, where I was before I moved here. But I'm right where I need to be and right where I'm supposed to be. So one of the things that I challenge you today on this Monday, motivational movement is appreciate the growth, appreciate the life experiences, appreciate the trials and the tribulations because they all make you who you are. If I had not been through all of these things and these trials and tribulations that I've been through, and <laughs> trust me, I've been through hell. But you wouldn't know that. Because people always see me smiling. And it's because I know that whatever I'm going through, there's somebody that could be going through something worse than I am going through. So, I really challenge you guys to just appreciate where you are. And if you're not where you are, set a goal, set a plan to get there. Set a plan. One of the things that I've been doing is really trying to develop different content for my YouTube page because it's just something God just put it on my heart to do. I didn't know what I was going to do. Originally, I started off with the Midwest Gluten-Free Diva, but it's turned into the Drama Queen vlog. Um, I recently took a comedy class, a stand-up comedy class, because it's something that I wanted to do. Because of that, I have started this, and we'll talk about it next week. 40 things, since I just turned 40, 40 things that I'm going to do before I turn 41. So 40 things to do while I'm still 40, and I've done some of them. Life is short if you're not where you want to be set up things to help you get there. With my YouTube, I got a call a couple weeks ago. Someone, producer, saw my YouTube page and wanted to talk to me about a project. That's a win. Even if I had auditioned and I didn't get it, it was still a win. We got, we have to learn how to accept the wins, no matter how big or small. So, don't let an accident don't let something traumatic happen before you realize like I need to be appreciative of whatever it is I have and figure out how I can use that to help other people you know with me um, I have celiac disease one of the reasons why I volunteered to go on 60 days in was because I wanted to bring awareness. <laughs> One of the things I've learned is that with reality TV, reality TV is not, it's real, but the editing can be manipulated to be whatever they want it to be. So I could say, you know what? I'm, I'm going to stop helping people. You know, I volunteered. I went to jail to try to bring awareness, and they manipulated my story. They lied. They did this. They, Okay, that avenue didn't work for that. So what's next? What's next? And that's where my 40 before 41 comes in. So I'm going to keep it short and end it right here and say be appreciative. And if you're not living the life where you don't have everything that you want, start setting the goals to make it happen. You can do it. I believe in you. Bye.